Holy Ghost and power are two things. Amen? And that does not represent the same thing, but they work together. The Holy Ghost work with power. The power is the affirmation of the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost is not power. And the power is not the Holy Ghost. But when we find the power, then it is a direct confirmation that the Holy Spirit is already present. Amen. So God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with what? Power. So anointing him with the Holy Ghost, anointing him with power, Give him that opportunity to go about doing what? Somebody say good. Now that word good is the word goodness. So the Holy Ghost went about demonstrating the goodness of God. What is it demonstrating? So what is the goodness of God? The glory of God in manifestation. What is the goodness of God? So in another word, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power. Who went about demonstrating the glory of God? <laughs> showing forth the glory of God. You enter market, you show forth the glory of God. Supermarket, you forth. Everywhere you enter in every day of your life, there must be a confirmation that the power of God is present with you. Either you shake hands of someone and infirmity disappear, whether you realize or not, something will happen. Hallelujah. Either you pray for someone, either you speak to someone, either God gives you a revelation, either you authenticate something in someone's life. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. This is the first scripture that even Jesus could not do ministry without being anointed. The word anointed simply means how God equipped the Holy Ghost and with what? In another word, qualification. How God qualified Jesus with Holy Ghost and with what? How God equipped, how God anointed, how God qualified Jesus with Holy Ghost and with power. We have all agreed together that man has a spirit, lives in soul, and then functions in the body. But how do I communicate with the king? And then I want you to be under the power of my communication. Then there must be a force that my communication represents. We are dealing with spirit forces. We are in the end time. The scripture says, Behold, gross darkness will cover the earth. Is that in your Bible? This is the time of gross. The word gross is a complete cycle of darkness. It's everywhere. And the only thing that makes a difference is the power of God. So, have that understanding that this building is just a building without the power. It doesn't matter. It's a matter of time. If you have a business and the power of God is not present in it, darkness will take it. I'm not just talking about ministry now. If you have a marriage and that marriage is void of power, darkness will take over that marriage. How do we know darkness has taken over? Because the works of darkness will be made manifest. You will know. If you have a relationship with a friend and that relationship is not solidified in power, you will soon fight. The best friend will become the worst enemy. Why? That is a void of the power of God. So the first thing I want to say is that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of what? Number two, the Holy Ghost is the custodian of power. Now, from my research about the Godhead, the Holy Spirit is not an errant spirit. It's part of the Godhead and is equal in Lordship. That is why the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is what? So, Holy Ghost is Lord. Jesus is Lord. God is Lord. So, He shares equality with them in the eternal equality he shares that equality with them so it's not an errant spirit and said that God now sent the Holy Ghost as an errant spirit no, Holy Ghost is God but why the Holy Ghost is different in the Godhead is that he is the custodian of what? of power 
Now, God has the ability to speak, but the Holy Ghost brings it to pass. Are you hearing me? God has the ability to do what? But who brings it to pass? And that is why the Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord was over him on the surface of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was what? So who said let there be light? Who made the light happen? The Holy Ghost is the power of God. Once there is an absence of that spirit, then the experiential knowledge of God you must have will be absent. You will continue reading scripture without understanding. In the book of Luke chapter 1, the Bible said to Mary, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. The power of the highest. What that simply means is that the power that comes from the highest dimension of God's operation is the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power overshadowed who? Mary. And Mary conceived. Are you hearing me? What overshadowed Mary? The power of the highest. So what overshadowed Mary? Power overshadowed her. Power cast shadow upon Mary. And then we began to see results without having intimacy with a man. What a power. Bashataba. What a power. Someone say what a power. If the Bible confirms that Jesus is the child of the Holy Ghost, then there is nothing Jesus will do without that Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is the seed of the Holy Ghost. No wonder when he wanted to heal, he healed without stress. He delivered without making any noise. He cast out the devil, the demons recognizing when he was coming. Is anybody hearing what I've just said? Why would the demons hear him, saw him? Because they saw him in that atmosphere. Today the power of God will come upon you. If you need it, say louder, amen. Yeah. There is something we need without poster. It's the power. There is something we need without flyer. It's the power. There is something we need without Facebook. It's the power. Once that power is void, once you are void of power, you increase in strategy without performance. That's what happens. So our generation is becoming the generation of strategy without power. Why do we resort into strategy? Because we are dealing with the mind of people. We are not dealing with their spirit. Once a church has a beautiful structure, they see everywhere, people naturally tend towards a structural church. An environment that is very cool and calm. People walked into an environment where everything that makes your body cool is there. Is a ministration to your body and to your mind. But the power is not talking to your mind. Power is relating with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Whatever level of ministry you are doing, power shifts you to the next level. Amen. You should not accept any compliments without the involvement of power. Why? Because we are created... Human being is created spirit. There is a spirit in you. You have a soul and you live in what? And this your spirit relates with the invisible realm. And in the invisible realm there are what? Spirit forces. Spirit what? That are divine and what? And demonic. These are the types of spirit forces that your spirit relates with. You don't need to sleep to relate with spirit. The only difference is that when you sleep, you have more awareness of the activities of spirit than when you are walking. Now, why is it that way? It is that way because your spirit man has a dealings with the spirit realm. And in that realm of spirit, there are spirit forces that interact with your spirit. And in the absence of power, they can impose their character onto your spirit. So there is possibility somebody lay hands upon a girl and then transference of spirit of adultery hits the man. 
there is possibility you pray with someone because of the limitless power of spirit influence in the human affairs you can begin to experience what somebody has been experienced for by the virtue of staying with the person in the same room are you hearing what i'm saying why because there is a spirit in a man and it is the inspiration of god that gives your spirit understanding so in the absence of understanding your spirit can be vulnerable because spirit has what we call the power of demonstration of peculiar character. My husband is not used to behave this way. Since he has gotten the job, something has taken over him. In that job, there is spirit of homosexuality. You can be in an environment and pick a peculiar spirit that, that, that associates with that environment. You can resume in an office and join the flow of the spirit that dominates that environment. So why do you think you need the power? You need this power to exercise dominion over every spirit forces that are contrary to the version of the spirit you are. In the absence of this, you manifest character subconsciously. There are two things about the spirit. They generate consciousness and subconsciousness. They project thoughts into your life. You don't even know where the thought is coming from because spirit has the ability, they, are pro they project thinking which represents their life. So, without the power, you will keep on resisting that thought until you become victim of it. Have respect unto your covenant. For the habitation of the word is full of credit. If God has called you to minister, do you think we are in heaven? You think this is heaven? It's only in heaven there are no contrary spirit. We are on the earth. And this earth, you must have the understanding that there are forces that have been cast down that are living with us here. Why are they living with us here? Because some people brought them to existence. They call those people the priest. The priest, the custodians of negative spirits, they call them chief priest. Spirits supposed not to live in our midst. But some people they decoded them. They broke the frequency of spirit forces. And then by being exposed to demonic order they summon them to live with us you imagine somebody who has a shrine in his house and then that shrine if you walk around the shrine you can fall down and die the spirits are guiding what the shrine because through the shrine it becomes a means of transporting them into that environment the moment you show up in that environment as a born again without picking a warfare they attack you it doesn't take 72 hours if you are very strong if you are very strong and you are full of stamina and you desire you will know that there is a battle that is already making demand upon your life but in the absence of power, that spirit will enforce the authority it carries to render you under him. There are places where we live that the spirit that is common in that place is indebtedness. And you have never, you have never been in indebtedness before. Two months after you got there. The influence of that spirit begin. It will take you understanding and the grace of God to trace what you are going through to the territorial spirit that controls that environment. In fact, demons know the name of everybody. Even Nigeria doesn't have a database. 
but demons know the numbers of born again that lives in this street. And they will do everything within their power to bring you under their governance. Once you are under their dominion, your ministry is finished. It doesn't matter what you do, you do it under them. People can pray under the influence of the darkness. People can fast under the influence of the darkness. People can run ministry under the influence of darkness. But when the power of God is present, they can feel the texture of power. Amen? Because the power of God is part of the substance of God's reality. But while you are in a bus and you sit in the middle and a demon possess sit beside you, that will be a reaction. At times you wonder and say, why are they reacting? They are reacting because the power has been the power is God's substance of reality that a contrary spirit will feel and then compulsorily they must bow under it. Any means of contending with that power they, they are brought on their knees. So if you are in the work of the ministry and you think that it is the wisdom of man that will be able to help you to succeed in ministry in this end time is stronger than the time of Moses. The witchcraft that is in operation right now, it doesn't respect title. It doesn't respect title. An anointed man can be manipulated. Philip was manipulated under the Simon the Sorcerer. He did water baptism. He went through his baptism training. They now called for Peter and John. And when Peter and John came, when he saw that by the laying of hands people received the Holy Ghost, he said unto Peter, he offered him money so that let me also receive this power. Power can be received. Hallelujah. Why do you feel that everything you do, you have strength to do them, but when it comes to prayer, you can't pray? It is an exercising of a power over your life. That power is there. <laughs> You, are, you were very active in everything. You were very active. If you are watching a TV, you watch it. Whatever you are doing, you watch it. As soon as you pick a Bible, in less than five minutes, what will happen? Now, what is happening to you is not moral. It's not tiredness. What is happening to you is that the moment you pick a Bible, the essence why you pick a Bible is to activate light on the inside. And those spirits hate light. They will rather keep you in the confinement of darkness so that they can exercise rulership over you. The moment you pick it, they project powerlessness or they project distractions into your spirit. And then five minutes after if you run your life like that for the next one month, you will have sex in the dream. Hello? Because some of the dreams we have is equational results. They are not just an attack. They are the result of the attack you have faced. There are dreams you have that they are not attack. They are the results of the attack. Hallelujah. God is chasing out that demons, that spirit interacting with our soul. The power of God illustrate his move. What does it do? God's power is an illustration of God's move. The power of God illustrates the move of God. The power of God illustrates the move of God. The power of God is the demonstration of his nature. The power of God is what? The demonstration. Of every time God wants to demonstrate his nature, he does that in power. Hallelujah. Now, say after me, God is power. That is his nature. God has power. That is his possession. God gives power. That is the act of his mercy. So the mercy of God is that he giveth power to the weak and to those who have no minds. Increases strength. He gives. He is. He has. He is power. He has power. 
this is your concern. He gives power. Why must he do this? He is power because he is self existence. He is power because he is a force that exerts himself in a direction. When God is going in this direction, he goes through the force called power. You could see the demonstration of power in a meeting at time that the power of God will concentrate here. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? How many of you have seen it before? That you see the power of God moving here and things are happening here and these things, things are not happening here. That power is an exertion of a force in a direction. In the direction where it goes is the direction where the power will be released. In the direction where God is going, that is where the power follows. So when God is moving in a direction, power announces him. You can't know. How do I want to know that God is here? Power announces his reality. So you won't know that God is in your room until power announces his arrival. Kabashada Baria. Until power announces him. And I will make all my goodness to do what? That is the complexity of my power. I will make all my good and the ability through which I do good. I will make it pass before you. This afternoon, the power of God is coming in your direction. If that sounds like I'm talking to you, say a louder amen. In the name of Jesus. So God is power. That is his person. God has power. That is his possession. God gives power. That is the act of his mercy. And you must also understand this reality very well. Very, 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 very well. When a man is baptized in the Holy Ghost, power is domiciled in your spirit. But it's not activated. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost as well. How many of you have received the Holy Ghost? So according to scripture, I have what? I have power, domicile where? But not activated. So the power that was in the apostle came upon them because they were baptized in what? The Holy Ghost. But the activation of the power came when Peter was filled by the Holy Ghost and spoke and 3,000 souls were converted. On their way to the temple, there was a man who sat at the beautiful gate. He said, look on us, silver and gold. We do not have what we have. We give you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The power was in them, but the activation happened now. So you can be a carrier of power without activation. You can watch somebody dead beside you. And instead of being conscious of the power you have, because you activate power through consciousness. So if you are not conscious of the power, you won't activate it to raise the dead. If you are not conscious of the power, you won't activate it to make a demand on heaven. So those who are born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, they have power, domicile in them, but they have not gone through what? activation when you buy your sim card they give you number or line but you must activate it ladies and gentlemen you are here for activation some of us are so kana we have been deeply kana that power is strength to our spirit in fact some so many people who are born again christian this day power is a burden to them they can flow in every other thing minus what how was service today? How do they define the service? A soulish service. What do I call it? You know, we know we have a soulish service. A service that is appealing to your mind. Man, it was mind blowing. May I not do a ministry of mind blowing? It was a mind blowing. That your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How does that how does it sound? The Holy Ghost is not a mind blowing. The Holy Ghost is a life blowing. Is what? Can I hear amen? amen? 
So if you are not walking consistently in the power of God, you will become a soulish believer. Soulish believer. When you see some, you fantasize. When there is a void of activation of power, you, you concentrate on things that are material and not things that are substantial. You see, you must come to have this understanding today that when you are singing, if you are gifted as a music, as a worship leader, people will clap for you. If you are anointed as a worship leader, they bow under the anointing. They don't clap for the anointing. They submit under his God. They surrender under his God. They don't hail the anointed. They weep under his meeting. They repent under his meeting. They are transformed under his meeting. But we have come into a dimension in the body of Christ that there is gift but there is no power. There can be word of knowledge without workings of miracles. You can call someone's name out, call their phone number, call the date of their birth and still power is not making things happen. Why? Because you do not press further into the deep realities of God. And the Bible says the hour has come. Blessed are those who are thirsty and hunger for righteousness. For they shall be filled. So the power of God illustrates your assignment. We don't know your assignment. Power is what illustrates it. Stop telling people. Stop writing mission statement. There is no mission statement without power. The spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted, to open the eyes of the blind, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He handed over the book and said, Today, this scripture is what? Guess what next? And he saw a man who has, whose right hand was withered. And he said, Stretch it for us. That was the practical of what he read. So what Jesus read was a mission statement. <laughs> but what illustrates his assignment is the power of God. So, when you are void of power, your assignment has no illustration. You know Adobe Illustrator. Hallelujah. That is exactly what the power of God will do in your life. The power will illustrate your assignment. There are many people, they don't have illustrative assignments. They try to talk and convince people. They speak, 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 speak. This is what God says. What is the practical side of what you carry? Let me say this with all reality. The degree of the power of God you have, it is the degree of the influence you have over spirit forces, including recreated spirit. There are people that the strength of their inner man is stronger than the pastor that pastored them. That sit under your congregation that the strength they possess in their spirit is stronger than their entire anointing you call you can. And that's why you will never talk, they will never listen. You know why they are not listening? Not because they are rebel, but you do not carry a strong influence to exercise authority over them. The Pharisees were complicated people. The Pharisees were strong system. They are the system called religion. We, our own religious system is not as strong as Pharisee. Pharisees are people that they understood the law. And they understood the consequence of the law. But when Jesus began to teach, he taught them as the one that has authority. Can you speak like the one that has authority? Oh my sinner. I said, can you speak like the one that has authority? Can you sing like the one that has authority? Can you pray like the one that has authority? Can you dream like the one that has authority? Can you shout like the one that has authority? Can you... Can you walk like the one that has authority? Can you view things like the one that has authority? Can you think like the one that has authority? Can you predict as the one that has authority? Can you prophesy as the one that has authority? Hallelujah. The teaching of Pharisee is line upon line. Precept 
upon precept. Establish laws. Intellectualism. Oratory. A very organized statement. Convincing. Paul the Apostle had issue with the Greeks because the Greeks demonstrated wisdom. And then their wisdom it was like an oratory. When they began to speak, it was like a poet. Like a poem. And then they have a lot of figure of speech through which they persuade the hearers. Paul the Apostle now said that your faith should not rest in the wisdom that culture develops. So he said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Where does your faith stand? In the power of God. What is the power of God? The illustration of God's reality. That which demonstrates the reality of God is what we call power. That is where my faith stands. Oh my goodness. I said that's where my faith stands. In another word, or talking I do. That's where my faith stands. The one who talks and he does it. Paul, the, Jesus said, that man whose right hand was withered, he said, stand up on the Sabbath day, which against the law. You see, if you are going to put these people into silence, you won't do it through the law. If you are going to break the law, the only thing that breaks the law without consequences is power. They kept Paul and Silas in the prison. The Bible said prayer was being made and as they began to sing, the foundations of the prison began to shake and all the doors opened and the jailer having seen them he brought it out to kill himself. He said, don't do yourself harm. We are still here. They broke all the doors including the doors of all the other inmates. Including the doors of those who didn't pray. If the door open only for you, you have no power. It must open on your wife. It must open on your children. Nothing illustrates the reality of God. Not in word, but in power. I'm going to give you demonstration and the reality of those things and put those things in difference today. In warfare, you don't endure threat. You react to it. He said you will take up the deadly things. It will not hurt you. You will match serpent. It will not hurt you. It's a reaction. So when Philistines now came, the moment, whatever position Samson was, once he had, Philistines were around. I wonder the thing. You will see the Superman on the inside. You will see the building of the monster. The eyes become weird. And then the spirit of might. Someone say spirit of might. Those are the things I want to explain to you. So the spirit of might. You know the spirit of might and power is not the same. The spirit of might determines the force through which power will be released. The spirit of might is catapult. The power is stone. So through the spirit of might release power. That's why the Bible talks about his outstretched arm. The mighty hand of God. That's why they call him the almighty. Every might is in him. He has all dimensions of mightiness. That's what we call almighty. He can use I, God. God can stare at you. And you collapse. Not everything God speaks. God, God's look is fear. There, there, there are ways God rebukes Satan without talking. Look at Shadow. Oh, Tiria, they don't shed more than your dark curry. You will do like that. She activated power. A witch is conscious of the power they have. That's why they are very, very effective. But believers, average believers, are not conscious of the power they already have because you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. So weak. So weak that when you pray for five minutes, don't watch my way. It's demons, it's not you. The demons they have made you their feast of laughter. Any means of exercising strength, they they they, they hold you captive. And let me warn you, it's a serious one. 
If you are not very careful, you will do soulish ministry. Soulish ministry accommodates fornication and adultery faster than any other thing. Why? Because the interaction of demons with your soul, it creates a damn population. You fantasize. With demons, a man fantasizes with himself. Where do you think that lesbian and homosexuality and bestiality, where do you think they all come from? Bestiality and sexuality and homosexuality. These forces are locked in the spirit. But they need somebody to transport them into the human idea. So the one who transports them into the human idea is a progenitor of that thing. Then, it, you, because the activities of darkness go through replication. It goes through what? All what they just need is somebody to bring that idea into our midst. Then they start replicating it. In less than one year, they form association. Do you know there is association of lesbian? Do you believe they are association? Homosexual? Bestiality? Why do they have association? Because they have to create a system to protect that demon. Because those demons are very powerless. They are naked spirits. They are embodied in human system. So once you create a system that protects them, then they are living in our midst unharmed. That's why you can't go to America now and begin to, to slap. If somebody comes to you and says, I'm a prostitute, he, she's paying tax. She's licensed by government. You can't preach against them. They have been protected. They have been preserved through a law, through a system. So it is a system that preserves demons. That system is in Nigeria. It's in the house of rape. If we don't kill that system, those demons won't go. How do we chase them away? We create a system that denies their expression. They go back to where they belong. The same thing you have to do in your life. You have to create a system of denial to the existence of evil spirit that pursues you. And I was with you in weakness. Physical weakness. And in what? Fear. And in what? Much trembling. In verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with what? Place you must separate speech from preaching. Someone say speech. In another word, my utterance, my statement, my speech. Do you know that power configure your speech? Come. Why did you come? Why did you come? Because I said it. Not only because I said it, because you recognize me that I'm a man that has authority over you. So I didn't force you to stand up. I ask you to stand. You exert a force to respond to my speech. So in synagogue, Jesus will be walking in the synagogue, and those who are demon possessed will say, Leave us alone. Leave us alone. I know you. You are the son of the most high. Power defines him. I got title without man to make you little. Power defines him. What defines him? We know you without campaign. We know you without poster. We know you without flyer. We know you without someone. We know you without theology. We know you without sound doctrine. We know you. You are the. How did they know him? Power illustrates his reality. They have never felt such vibration before. One of the things the power of God does in the realm of the spirit, it confirms vibrations. So, my speech and my preaching, there is nothing demons enjoy most than preaching and speech spiced up in human's wisdom. You will see demons dancing inside people. Some people will do like this. Oh, pastor, give it to me, give it to me. Oh, that's the right word. The word that is coming from the members, they are to litter back the pastor. You will see some people blow it. Going, ah, yes, that's the right word. Ha, ah, oh, my man, my man. All kinds of nonsense will be coming out. Why is it coming out? For my speech and my preaching. 
and it will only a mission. I talk to ride on pastor. That spirit that says ride on is not the Holy Ghost. It is the demons encouraging the pastor to ride on. Because that speech and the utterance, they were formulated and generated from the human idea. But if the same person and another man of God climbs the altar, the same person that says ride on, you say, yeah, yeah. What is the difference? The anointing that is introduced first the reality of that stupid demons to react to the, the revelational word that is established on power. So without power what we have is a clubhouse. It's a glorified secondary school. In the work of the ministry you become a newscaster. You talk, 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 talk to convince someone why well, you are not a promoter. When there is a new product, especially from the banking system, they did a lot of advertisement. Am I right? But those advertisements, they are not the practical side that confirms the product. They are just the enticing side that brings you to patronize the product. The power of that product is not felt first because it has just gone through announcements or advertisement. But when you start using the product, that is when you will understand the authentication of that product. That is exactly how ministry look like in this end time. We do a lot of fantasy. They call it a soul attracting work. Which brings people into that ministry. Six months later, there is nothing tangible that represents the name that ministry represents. For example, now, when you say Holy Ghost Power inter, 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 International Ministry. Now, I believe strongly that the name of a ministry, it is the summary of the call that is upon that man of God. So when you now say Holy Ghost Incorporated Ministry, what that simply means is that the mission of that ministry is to generate the expression of the Holy Ghost in all dimensions. But after six months joining the ministry, nobody received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a denial of what you project. So the Bible says you have a form of godliness. The word godliness does not mean morality. No. Godliness simply means the manifestation of God in the bodily form. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was found in a man. Hallelujah. So the word godliness simply means the embodiment of God in a vessel that is trapped in the human body. So people have that form. But the power through which we weigh the reality of their form is absence. And that makes you a religious person. A religious person can be a preacher who has a very strong utterance and oratory and a well arranged spice up statement that can trap your soul but at the end of the day they keep telling you hope 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 until you stumble at the scripture hope defy makes the heart sick so my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man wisdom but in demonstration of what and what so say after me, what we demonstrate is spirit. And what? One more time, say what I demonstrate in the work of the ministry is spirit. And what? So how do we demonstrate spirit? And what? How? So, in demonstration of spirit, how do you how how does Daniel demonstrate spirit? You are preaching. You are preaching. You are preaching. And what is your topic? A divine counsel. The counsel of God shall stand. The counsel of God shall stand. The counsel of... You are preaching. You are preaching. All of a sudden, you just look at the direction. And you say, Don't say the Lord. About this time, next two weeks, there's a big manifestation of the grace of God. And this also thing is happening in your life. What you have just done is that you have shifted from preaching to demonstration of spirit. What is the demonstration? You are demonstrate the spirit of prophecy. You continue your preaching. You continue your preaching. You continue your preaching. Let's look at point number two. Ah, there is another person here. This is the third time you have lost money. Mysteriously. The Lord says he has brought an end to what? You are spicing that ministry. 
ministry. You are spicing up that ministry with what? With spirit demonstration. Sir, if you preach for one hour without it, 75% of your member will sleep. They are not backsliding. You are not spicing them. You are not what? You are not spicing up their spirit. And once there is no spice, how many of you have done that before under another man of God? You will think you are bastard. You are not. No spice up. Let them change that man. Let them bring another one. And let them bring another man. So kata, takata, kataka. What? Nobody wakes you up. We don't need us where there is only ghost field. You yourself, you do like it. That's the same you three minutes ago. So when you hear Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Spirit demonstrated revelation through his utterance. And then five minutes later, he said, You will not die. Jesus said, Get behind me, what? Satan. He demonstrated the spirit of the flesh in which the devil pioneers. So now my speech, because listen to this, we use speech, which is utterance. To communicate reality to your spirit, Bluetooth will not trans through which you communicate reality to another spirit. If you are going to take some picture from me, is that I use sender, um, sender, share, or Bluetooth? Then, but one of them is faster than the other. So, what you will upgrade is the Bluetooth, not the Holy Ghost. Upgrade your trans. So that the communication of the reality from you to another person can happen faster than you ever think. So therefore, my utterance must be anointed. And it is full of demonstration of spiritual reality. And there is no spiritual reality without gifting. Don't let anybody fool you. And when you hear something like, you know, character is better than charisma, you will die. Unfulfilled. What is character better than charisma? Character doesn't wake up the dead. Character does not open the eyes of the blind. No deaf hears because you are good. Ephrata, I say what? Open. Spirit decode the utterance to release reality. What are we talking about? I bind. The spirit of misunderstanding in your life. Amen. In the entire career of Jesus' ministry on the earth, it was only one. He prayed for people twice. He laid out upon the man. He saw men walking like words. The man cried out. He said, I saw men walking like tree. And the second time, that was the only time Jesus laid hands upon one person if you lay hands upon one person 10 times, 15 times, 25 times, 26 times, stop laying of hands. Upgrade. There is something that my lady needs to hear that you have not been feeding her with. You must upgrade utterance to unveil reality of spirit. Nobody fine tune that utterance. I didn't get it from anywhere. The Holy Ghost truths that or trans to unlock the spirit reality because you see the reality of the spirit is that spirits are coded entity you know decoder decoder is to decode frequency so that you can track satellites and track it onto your decoder and channel them that's what they call it decoder decoder simply means when you understand the polarization the h and the p is it H or is it P? 1, 2, 2, 3.41 P. And then the polarization is 43.5 degree. If you search it and track that frequency, it will show something. So, the prince of the power of the air. The Bible calls Satan the prince of the power of the air. The Bible calls Jesus the prince of peace. The prince of calmness. The prince of equanimation. The prince of divine settlement. The prince of final reality. This is what we call ear. The demons walk through the ear system. That is why we call the Holy Ghost Numa. Numa means breath, wind, and spirit. 
if you see breath, wind, and spirit, they originate from the same translation. So what that simply means is that you can inhale demons by breathing in. And you can exhale demons by breathing out. So under the power of God that is so demonstrated, people do that. Like ha! Ha! The demons has gone. They are disembodied spirit that needs a body to function. 